Let's see how to add a custom block to Minecraft 1171 with Fabric. All right, we found ourselves in IntelliJ once more, and in this tutorial, we will add a custom block to the game, which actually is going to be fairly straightforward and very similar to adding an item to the game. In a similar manner, we will create a new package inside of our tutorial mod package called block. And inside of here, we will create a new class, which will be the mod blocks class. And this class will have similar methods than our mod item class. The first thing we will add is a public static void register mod blocks method right here. This will simply output system out print line registering mod blocks for, and then once again, tutorial mod dot mod ID. I quickly wanted to mention why we're adding this method. This only outputs something, but we still have to call it Y. The idea is that we have to call this class once so that the static fields sort of initialize. That's the basic gist of it. If you do not have this and don't call this in the tutorial mod initialize method right here, then adding the items and the blocks will not actually work. So this is definitely a, a requirement in this case. And then we want to register a block. So private static block. Now, what is very important that we take the net Minecraft block right here, singular block register block, once again with a string parameter name and a block parameter called block. We will once again return registry and making sure that we have a net Minecraft util registry dot register, registry dot block, and then a new identifier with our tutorial mod mod ID and the given name and then the block. So that's all that we really need to do to register the block. We have to, however, have another method here, and that is to register the block item. The idea is that when we register a block, we have registered the block that we can place in the world, but we also need a block item that belongs to that block. And we're going to do that by making a new private static item, register block item with once again a string name and a block block. Let's import item, pressing Alt and Enter, and we will return registry dot register registry item this case with a new identifier once again of course tutorial mod dot mod id and a name and then what we'll do is we'll create a new block item as you can see this will take in a block and then some settings those will once again be the new fabric item settings and the only thing we'll set here is a item group We'll just take the item group miscellaneous. There you go. That is the entire method here. Now, what is very important here is that this means that every block that we are actually making is going to be placed under the same item group in the creative inventory. We can change this later down the line, or we could also, for example, add a parameter to both of these methods so that we can select the group that we want to. This is something that we might want to do at the moment. We're going to keep it like it is. And then we will also call this right here. So register block item with the same name and the block. So the item will have exactly the same identifier as the block. This is not an issue because they're registered in different registries here. So that's all going to be fine. And now on to making the block. So public static final block called Ruby underscore or, and we will call the register block method here with the first parameter being Ruby underscore or, or lowercase and just like this. Once again, this name here gets generated automatically, so you don't have to type that out. And then we have a new block that we're going to create. And those also take settings. Those will, however, take the fabric block settings in this case. And those are usually off some type of material. So we're going to say fabric block settings dot off and then material dot stone, for example. Let me quickly format this a little bit nicer. There you go. After the parentheses of the off call, we can now do some very cool things. As you can see, there's a lot of things that we can specify here for a block. And that's sort of the point. Blocks are definitely more complex in what you can do with them. Even with sort of these simple blocks, the main thing is going to be strength. This determines how resistant and how long it is going to take for you to break this block. Another interesting thing is a break by tool. And this will take a tool tag. So this will take a fabric tool tags. And then you can say which of these tools is needed to break this item. So for example, pick access, and we can also select a mining level. Let me once again format this a little bit nicer. So break by tool simply means that this is going to be broken with pick access and mining level two. So those are simply the mining levels for each of the different tiers. So wood, stone, iron, diamond, and netherite. And then one more thing that we need to add, 
This is the requires tool right here. And then let's end all of this with a semicolon right here. So the requires tool is needed when we add a loot table or drop to this block, which we're going to do later in this series, then this is required. Uh, otherwise, it will not work. I still am not quite sure why this is not the default, because usually every block you actually mine should have some type of drop. But anyway, that's the way it is. Right, and this is the block added. Let's also call the mod blocks dot register mod blocks in the on initialize method right here. Make sure that this is called second. So after the mod items register mod items, just to make sure that this is in the correct order here. And then we can move on to the JSON files. The first thing in the assets tutorial mod folder, let's create a new directory called block states. Now very important that this is block states exactly written like this with an S at the end. And there we will create a new file called ruby underscore or dot adjacent. Now this once again is of course the same name that we have in this register block method right here. So this name has to match and I will type this out once more. So this is going to be curly brackets and then variance colon curly brackets colon curly brackets and then just empty quotation marks colon curly brackets model and then tutorial mod colon block slash ruby underscore or. So roughly speaking, a block state simply defines a few different states for a block. Because we have a very simple block, there aren't any different states in there. So we simply have to point to one particular model, which we're going to create in just a moment. This is also just a JSON file similar to the models item JSON file we have done for the Ruby last tutorial. And in this case, we're also going to need a block model for this. And this is exactly what this points to. You can see this points to a model. So it's going to look in the models folder under the tutorial mod mod ID. And it's going to look for a block folder for the Ruby underscore or JSON. So let's create the block model JSON. Under the models folder, new directory block. And then in the block folder, new file Ruby underscore or dot JSON. And we'll type this out for once as well. This is going to be curly brackets, parent block slash cube underscore all textures colon curly brackets all and then once again tutorial mod colon block slash ruby underscore or this will simply make it so that all six side of the block have the ruby or texture that we will of course also create in the textures folder. Now very important that this points to the block folder inside of the textures folder. So there's something else we need to create. But before we can do that, we actually do not have an item representation yet. So for the block, you will also need to add an item model here. So right click new file ruby underscore or dot JSON. However, this is very easy. This is simply going to be curly brackets and then parent colon tutorial mod colon block slash ruby underscore or and that's it. So this simply points back to the block model and this will then create the effect of this 3D block that is inside of your inventory. You know when you have a block inside of your inventory it sort of has a 3D look to it and you can see three sides of it and the texture of the block and that's simply what is going to happen here as well. So this simply points back to the block model and that is then displayed in the inventory. Very important to note all of the JSON files are of course linked in the description below so you don't have to necessarily type everything out yourself. You can also copy the contents over I also have a GitHub repository separated into different branches for each of these tutorials right here. So you can always check out the code and also copy over some of the JSON files. And going forward, when we're going to add a new block or a new item, I would always encourage you to simply copy the JSON files and then change the contents instead of writing everything out. And because most of the JSON files are very similar anyway, at least for the more simple blocks, that's going to be fine. Right, then let's add the texture here. So under textures, create a new directory called block. And then I will add the Ruby or PNG to it. This is of course also available for download in the description below. And and last but not least, let's also add this to our en underscore us JSON file. So this will be block dot tutorial mod dot ruby underscore or colon ruby or. And now that everything has been done, let's see if our block has been added to the game. Or if we find ourselves in Minecraft once more and let's see if the block has been added. It should be under the miscellaneous tab at the very bottom. And there it is, the ruby or has been added to the game. Let's set it down. And I must say, isn't this just the most beautiful thing you've ever seen? Well, maybe not quite the most beautiful thing, but it's still pretty cool. Yeah, and that's how easy it can be to add your own block to Minecraft. 
And that would already be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would of course appreciate a like and I will see you in the next tutorial. So yeah.